There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this podcast. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, March 30th, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. The Anne Arundel County Police have arrested one of their own after a domestic assault call in Odenton on Saturday night. On Saturday night, March 28th, just before midnight, officers were called to the 500 block of Maple Ridge Lane. The victim advised that her live-in boyfriend physically assaulted her during an argument, and during the investigation, officers discovered that there was probably a previously unreported domestic assault involving the same two people back in January. The suspect was identified as a 24-year veteran of the Anne Arundel County Police Department, currently assigned to the patrol division as a sergeant. He was charged with second-degree assault and is currently suspended with pay, but without police powers. Back in October of 2019, the Anne Arundel County Police Department received a tip about uploading child pornographic images to a specific website. They began an investigation, and on January 15th of this year, they responded to the 1000 block of Biltmore Avenue in West River, Maryland, to serve a search warrant. They identified the suspect as a 68-year-old male of that residence. He was the sole occupant of the residence, and he did permit them to look at his digital devices. They seized the devices. They sent them out for a forensic analysis, and after receiving the results, they did confirm that they did have child pornography on them. On March 26th, they responded back to the 1000 block of Biltmore Avenue and placed the 68-year-old man under arrest without incident. He has been charged with 10 counts of possession of child pornography. Down here in the city of Annapolis, the 2019 crime statistics are out. It looks like crime ticked up a bit in Annapolis over 2018. Now, Annapolis does follow the FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting Program, and it should be noted that that crime reporting program has changed a little bit over the past few years as well. So some of the crimes that were considered a serious crime are not anymore, and some that weren't are. So it's very difficult to compare an apples to apples. But In violent crime, they did see an uptick in 2019 in homicides, robberies, and aggravated assaults. They also saw an uptick in property crime by 2%. Just to give you an idea, there were four homicides in 2019, which represents a 300% increase. But because we have so few homicides, that's sort of an insignificant number. Rape was down 59% from 27 to 11. Robbery was up 43% from 47 to 67 Aggravated assault was up 21% from 140 to 170. As far as the property crimes go, motor vehicle theft was up considerably at 67%. Larceny was pretty flat. It was up 2%, not a whole lot of difference there. And burglary was down 26% from 133 to 98. The police department does say over the past three years, it is the lowest average since 1975. A little bit of an update on the Anne Arundel County Police Department. Last week, we told you that they were requesting people to report certain crimes online or on the phone, and now they are making that mandatory for certain crimes. They are looking to make sure that they are able to socially distance themselves and reduce the chance of spreading the COVID-19 virus and effective immediately. All of these crimes need to be reported online. You can go to ionanapolis.net. Find the link there, or you can go to the Anne Arundel County Police Department's website and find the link there as well. But if you have to report destruction to a vehicle, destruction of property or vandalism, theft from a vehicle, thefts of vehicle parts and accessories, tampering with a vehicle, attempted vehicle theft, credit or debit card theft, identity theft, lost property, telephone misuse, or trespassing, those should all be reported online. However, if they are happening and actively in progress, call 911 and get a cop there as soon as possible. Keep in mind that this is for Anne Arundel County only at this point. The city of Annapolis is a separate jurisdiction, as is BWI Airport, which does include Amtrak and the light rail trains, or any federally owned land or property, Fort Meade, NSA, Naval Academy, Cirque, 
And if anything happens on those properties, you need to contact the appropriate agency for a police officer to respond. All right, let's get into a corona update. Between March 28th and 29th, Maryland saw the largest day jump in confirmed COVID-19 cases across the state. And as of 10 a.m. yesterday morning, there were a total of 1,239 cases with 10 reported deaths. In Anne Arundel County, that number had increased to 99 with one death. Most disturbing, up in Carroll County, 66 residents of the Pleasant View Nursing Home in Mount Airy tested positive with 11 that were currently hospitalized, and we do understand that one of them may have died. And on that, Governor Hogan had released a statement late Saturday night saying that tonight Maryland has experienced a tragic coronavirus outbreak at the Pleasant View Nursing Home in Mount Airy. Multiple state agencies are on the scene and working closely with the local health department and the facility as they take urgent steps to protect additional residents and staff who may have been exposed. And yesterday morning, Alderman Ross Arnett, who represents Ward 8 in the city of Annapolis, sent out an email from his official annapolis.gov email address entitled, Know Your Coronavirus Enemy. In the email, the alderman did offer what he admits is a third-hand information on the COVID-19 virus, and part of that suggests that Listerine is an effective use to fight the virus. Well, you go to Listerine's website and it says, yeah, no, not at all. I'm not sure why Alderman felt it was necessary to send out this third-hand information, which appears to be mostly incorrect. So if anybody did receive it, I would suggest you disregard it there. Authorities from the CDC, who the state, local health departments have all warned about second- and third-hand advice. And make sure you're getting your information from trusted, reliable sources. If you'd like to see the Alderman's email, you can go to ionanapolis.net. We do have a copy of it posted there as well. And in some disappointing news, the Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival has announced that they are going to cancel the 2020 festival and reschedule it for 2021, particularly disappointing since they did not have a festival in 2019. They do have some new dates. It is postponed until May 22nd and 23rd of 2021. And the organizers, which are father-daughter pair, Don Hooker and his daughter, Sarah Petska, say they have pretty much the same lineup as was originally scheduled for this year. And they've confirmed all but a few artists. So that is good. Anybody that has purchased tickets can use those tickets for 2021, or they can request a refund by contacting Eventbrite, who did issue the tickets. Now, Don Hooker did put out a statement, and he said, and I think this is pretty profound, although we are very disappointed to push the festival out a year, we know what is the right thing to do. This is certainly a unique time in our world, but it is not the first. My generation was trained to hide under our desks in the event of a nuclear war during the Cold War. Many of my parents' generations lived, suffered, and died during World War II. My grandparents suffered through the Great Depression. Their parents lived through the Spanish flu outbreak. Those generations and the country survived those catastrophic events. I believe it brought out the best of us and the best in us. We look back on their heroism and determination with admiration. They survived, and we will survive this together. And to that, I say amen to Don Hooker. And if you did not get a chance to listen to our Legacy Business Spotlight on Saturday, give it a shot. It's all about biking, and we spoke with Rachel Varn from Pedal Power Kids and all the great things that she's doing. And biking is still a pretty safe thing for you to do. Get out on the trails and get some fresh air, but give that a listen. And we are taking a pause on the Legacy Business Spotlight for a little bit. I do prefer talking to people face-to-face. I don't think you get the same thing if you talk over the phone. And, well, with the coronavirus, we're not getting too much face-to-face time with anybody. So, What I'm going to be doing is rerunning some past episodes for the near future anyhow. And as soon as we can get back out and talk to people face to face, we will resume that. I am really disappointed in this because we were so close to being full year of the Legacy Business Spotlight. That one year episode would have been April 18th. And also speaking of podcast on Friday afternoon, we spoke with Michelle Eberly, who is the executive director for the Maryland Health Connection. And we talked about them reopening up the open enrollment period for health care. So if you do not have health insurance, you want to make sure that you listen to that. Find out ways that you can get health insurance right now. It's only open through the 15th of April. It may be extended, but if you don't have health insurance, you need to get on that right now. Give that a listen. Michelle Eberly with the Maryland Health Connection. All right, that wraps it up for the news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day and we will have an update on the latest coronavirus numbers. If you are someplace you can give us a rating or a review, please do that and let your friends and family know about us too as well if you like what we're doing. It is Monday, so we do have Ann Alsina with your Money Monday report. And of course, as we have every day, George Young with your local DMV weather forecast right after this message from Solar Energy Services. Hello, Marylanders. I'm Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services. 
Have you been thinking about solar for your home or business? If so, now's the time. The economics of solar are better than ever, and there's no better source than the trusted team at Solar Energy Services. We're the local experts with the best reviews in town. We've been around for 40-plus years, and we'll be here even longer to back up the generous warranties we offer. Let me put the solar economics in perspective. A typical residential solar investment in Maryland has an annual rate of return between 8 and 12%. And where can you get 10% annual returns for more than 25 years with very low risk? Not in savings, not even in stocks. So make your smartest investment ever by installing solar now and enjoy the satisfaction of doing your part for clean energy. Don't wait another minute. Sunshine's a waste. Call today, 410-923-6090 or visit solarsaves.net. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey, everyone. This is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, March 30th. Not a terrible weekend overall, all things considered, though it did take a few hours too long for sunshine and warmer air to move in yesterday to make a big difference. But today will feature plenty of sunshine with highs 65 to 72 degrees. Those skies will be a bit breezy with winds occasionally gusting to 20 to 25 miles per hour at times before we then see a couple of days in the 50s Tuesday and Wednesday with clouds as well as maybe a few showers on Wednesday ahead of then a nice sunny stretch Thursday through the weekend with highs each day upper 50s to maybe mid 60s for all of Anne Arundel County. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there as we enter week three of our new personal, professional, and social schedules. And be sure to get our app on all of your devices by searching DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and use our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. This is TJ Smith. I'm running to be your mayor. I'm not a politician. I'm a lifelong public servant. And right now, in our city, there is no more urgent time to serve. We need to turn the page on corruption at City Hall that spanned a decade and be swift and bold in reducing crime and trauma. It's time we think different, Baltimore. We need to want more. We need to expect more. I'm T.J. Smith, and with your support, I know that we can be more. Paid for by friends of T.J. Smith, Carlton F. Senior Treasurer. Your money, managing and investing it can be confusing and sometimes scary. Here to help you put your financial picture into focus is Ann Alsina from Covington Alsina with your Monday Money Report. This is Ann Alsina of Covington Alsina with your Monday Money Report. What a wild ride. The markets are on a roller coaster right now, and we expect that to continue for some time. On the expectation of the stimulus bill being passed, the market surged, posting the largest gain since 1931. Friday was down again, but not enough to wipe out the week's gains. Overall, we're still at 2017 levels in the market. I know it's hard to be calm and objective in the face of such uncertainty. We don't know what is going to happen, but we do have some history that should provide some reassurance. We refer to the current drop in the market as an extreme sell-off, meaning more than 90% of the stocks listed in the S&P 500 index have dropped below their 200-day average stock price. Going back to Black Monday in October 1987, this is the seventh time such an extreme drop has happened in the market. On average, stock prices were up over 11% six months after the drop. A year later, they were up 23% on average, which is all a good reason to close your eyes and stay the course with your investments. It's also important to note that this is a different event than the financial crisis of 2008-09. That was a balance sheet recession, meaning we were concerned with companies going under and failing completely, like General Motors did. The current economic conditions are a liquidity issue, meaning businesses just need cash flow to get through this. The Federal Reserve Bank here in the U.S., and other central banks around the globe have all acted quickly and decisively to push liquidity into the market. Those actions, coupled with the recent stimulus bill, should help keep the current economic impact short, albeit painful. On a smaller, more local level, there is help available for both small businesses and the self-employed. Part of the stimulus bill includes expanding unemployment insurance for 1099 workers and the self-employed. The SBA and the state both have loans and grants available. Times like this act as a magnifying glass. The jerks will be even bigger jerks hoarding toilet paper and cleaning supplies. And the vast majority of us will be singing in the trenches to encourage each other and lift others up. America is the most generous nation on earth, and we are resilient. We'll get through this together. There's a lot more information about the market on our website at www.covingtonalcina.com and our Facebook page, 
www.facebook.com forward slash Covington Alcina. We're sending out emails with research and investment commentary, and you can sign up on our Facebook page for that as well. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advice offered through Great Valley Advisor Group, a registered investment advisor. Covington Alcina and Great Valley Advisor Group are separate entities from LPL Financial. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Opinions voiced in this show are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, and financial advisor or tax advisor prior to investing. And if you don't have a financial advisor or you haven't heard from yours, come talk to us. This is Anne Alcina with Covington Alcina. Whether it's a fire, a hurricane, or a virus, Annapolis comes together. We've done it time and time again. Because this is a town that gets it. A town that knows how to lift each other up when the world falls down. As we face this new challenge, I encourage our community to come together as we've always done. I'm Steve Samaras from Zachary's Jewelers. I pledge to lend a hand to support my family, my team, my neighbors, and the small businesses in our town. Together, let's do what we've always done. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, eyeonannapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.